In this tutorial, we'll use Google SketchUp to draw a box, a simple box with keyed miter joints. Again, we'll go down to our dock, over to Applications. Under the Google SketchUp folder, we'll open the SketchUp application. We're going to choose Templates, scroll down to Product Design and Woodworking in Inches, and start using SketchUp. Under View, Tool Palettes, Large Tool Set, I'll open my large tool set over here and select the Rectangle Tool. I'm going to start right at the origin and draw a rectangle and use my dimension box. I'm going to type in 3,5 to create a 3 by 5 rectangle. Using two finger zoom, I will zoom right into that box. Using the hand, I might move it over a little bit, zoom in just a bit more. I'm going to go up and use my push-pull tool to pull that rectangle upward and type in 2.5 or 2.5 in order to raise that up 2.5 inches. Uh, notice that it, uh, you could also type in 2 space 1.5 inches and the inches are optional um, but you can use the parentheses I'm sorry the quotation mark there for inches alright back to our box we want to go down and use a new tool now the offset tool which is right here and on the top surface click drag it around and you'll see that it creates a new rectangle that's offset from the larger one and we want to offset that by one half inch. So I can do one half or 0.5 and hit return. And I've now offset that outer rectangle by half an inch to create the half inch thickness of my walls. Take my push pull tool, focus on that center rectangle, push it down. I'm going to push it down. Uh, exactly two inches, so two return. I'm now going to use my orbit tool to orbit down to see the bottom of it, or I could always use camera, standard views, bottom. Shortcut for that is the Command 2 button. That'll give me the bottom view. Again, I'm going to take that offset tool. I'm going to click and drag and then type in, this time I'll just put 0.5, return, so I've offset it the same amount as I did on the top. Using my push-pull tool, highlight that center, and this time I'm going to scroll downward to push it in, downward just a little bit, and type in 1 quarter, return. That way I've pushed it up a quarter, which should leave one quarter inch thickness for that, um, for that bottom. And if you orbit just a bit, you can see how it's pushed up a quarter inch. In fact, we can orbit all the way around to the top. And back down to the bottom to see what we have. Now we probably want to indicate that we're using miter joints, so let's take the line tool the pencil tool, and I will snap to a corner, push and drag, and snap to a corner. Click, click, from a corner to a corner, end point to end point. Uh, to see my top view, I can go camera, standard views, top, or the command one shortcut. And let's add those same lines to indicate the miter joints. And I will use the Command 7 shortcut to get to the top isometric view. I'd like to draw in my keys now, but before I draw the keys I want some reference lines. To get some guidelines I'm going to go to the Tape Measure tool I'm going to hover over this top line, click and drag, and that will give me a guideline. I want that guideline to come down a half inch. 
that's about a half inch, but if I type in one half or 0.5, it'll be exactly a half inch. When I go to do it the second time, I'm going to start on the original guideline, come down another, and it'll pop to a half inch. Okay, it'll snap to a half inch since that's what I used before. And one more time, click and snap to a half inch. That gives me three guidelines to guide where I put my rectangles for the miter keys. Come over to the rectangle tool, start on that intersection point, draw a rectangle, and let's make this one quarter, I'm sorry, one eighth, comma, one half. So in my dimension box, I've typed one eighth, comma, one half, and that gives me about the right size for my um, miter key. I'm going to come over here and draw one on the other face. And again, I'm actually going to have to type in uh, one half, comma, one eighth in a different order because I'm around the corner on this different face. Uh, if you were to type in the wrong dimensions and it, and it looks incorrect, you can always retype them. All right, so now I have the two rectangles showing on the face, but I need to make this into a three-dimensional object. I need to connect with my line tool. I'm going to connect that top corner or that endpoint across to the other one to make a triangle out of that. Notice you don't see the line right now. That's okay. Come on down to this bottom endpoint and across to that endpoint. So you can't see those lines because they're behind the surface of the box. But if we go up to View, Face Styles, X-Ray, this will give us an X-Ray view and you can see that we have created this triangular key here. Let's go ahead and undo that. So uh, Face Styles, X-Ray Off. All right, so we've created one key. Rather than having to redraw that, let's just copy and paste it. So if I go to my select tool or my pointer tool, I draw a rectangle around only that key, making sure that I include all of the key but nothing else. I can now uh, copy by using the command C key, or I could come up here and say edit copy. And then I'm going to do uh, paste by command V, which I could also do by coming up here and doing paste. Now that I've pasted it, notice it moves around with my cursor, and every time I go to a different surface, it's going to try to paste it in a different way. Again, this can be very frustrating at times, and it takes a little bit of practice, but because I created these guidelines, I can come right into that corner, and go to that intersection point, and paste that key. I don't need to copy it again. I can just hit Command V and I'll paste it a second time and place it on the other guideline. I now have three evenly spaced miter keys. Before going to another corner, let's go ahead and use our selection tool to select all three of those. And we're going to go up to a new tool. This is called the component tool. If I click on that and I name this keys, I can create a component out of this. I'm going to use that later on when I build a box out of components. You'll see that in just a bit. But right now what I've done is I've sort of grouped these together into one component. Now if I copy and I'm going to rotate around using my orbit tool until I see the other corner. I need to see that corner to get it to paste correctly. And I can either use um, edit paste or command V to paste. And now I have those three. And again, you'll see there, they're moving around into all different orientations. But if I bring it down and I take the lower corner and put it right where it belongs, it takes a little bit of finesse to get it right where you want it. There we go. Click and paste it. And orbit one more time to this corner. Uh, option V to paste. And to line it up with these, I can go to that 
endpoint and just move over and it'll give me a dotted reference line, a reference line telling me where I want it. Click to place it. Again, orbit to the last corner. Command V to paste. Let's use this reference point this time. Uh, get that dotted reference line to have it the right height. Get right on that edge. Click to paste it. And let's go ahead and try to orbit back to our original view. Here we go. Let's look at it again in face style x-ray. You should see that you have all those keys placed. Let's turn the x-ray off. Let's also get rid of the guidelines. They're still there, I'm just not viewing them. And let's get rid of the axes. And one little click to unhighlight those. And I might want to orbit it just a bit to be able to see the interior bottom of the box. And there I have a solid box. And I could save this if I wanted to as box one on the desktop or anywhere that you want to save it. And that's it. Um, one problem with this method to drawing a box is that if I wanted to break this out and see each of the sides or each of the pieces of wood that I'm cutting, because of the sticky geometry, if I move this line, if I move this line using the move tool, notice everything gets stretched out of place. Well, that's not good. Again, Option Z to undo. I could highlight this line as well. If I go up to my selection tool, I could select both of those lines and then move. I'll move both of them. But again, the bottom's not moving with it, and I can't break it apart because it's sticking to the sides. Option Z to undo. The only thing that I can move as a unit is the component that I built. I can take those keys out. I'm rotating. I don't want to rotate. So Option Z to undo it. I want to move it. So I could bring that out and put it anywhere. Option Z to put it back in. So as it turns out, the sticky geometry is such that we can't break components apart. We can't break things apart unless we make them into components. So if we want to be able to break this out into a plan view, we're going to have to build each piece as a separate component. And that's what we'll do in the next tutorial.